Guys, Dr. Z, welcome to the Z Dog MD Show. Today I have <laughs> Federico Fagine, author of the book Silicon, which is a memoir. You guys don't know who this guy is. Um, he kind of invented the world's first commercial microprocessor, the Intel 4004. Uh, and the technology actually before that at Fairchild, the Silicon Gate, uh, you know, MOS technology, the MOS technology that pretty much runs computers around the world. If you're using a phone, uh, the stuff that this guy invented kind of is the reason that phone exists. It, it's just a thrill to have him in the studio. And what we're going to talk about is why he thinks that computers can never be conscious and will never supersede humanity in the way that we, our dire predictions predict they will, but they might do other harm. And why we may be living in a virtual reality, but not the way you think. So it's gonna get deep. So come along for the ride, Federico, welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It, man, I, you know, I read your, your book, your son had reached out because uh, we have a mutual acquaintance, Don Hoffman, and Don's yes. been on the show talking about consciousness and yes. cognitive scientist, computer scientist. Then we have another mutual acquaintance, Bernardo Castro, computer scientist, yeah. fascinated with consciousness. What is it with consciousness and computer scientists? Well, I, I think because computers uh, have a lot of us in them. Ah. And when you, you know, when you play with a computer, your mind goes into the computer in the algorithm that you figure out, in, in, in the way that you, you know, it's like a little obedient slave that you make him do what you want, but what you want comes from your mind. So, so and th this is a fundamental thing because we seem to think of computers as these things that have selves and some kind of uh, personification of their own, but what you, and, and remember, you've been working on this a whole career, like you built these microprocessors, you talk about it in the book, it's just, stunning how the creative process working in teams at Intel in the early days and and all the drama like, oh, you know, and Andy Grove and this and that. It's just, it's really fascinating just as a soap opera, but as a human creativity piece, you should know this better than anyone that the computer is just stuff. And what you said where we put ourselves into the computer, whether it's through designing the software, teaching it the algorithms or using it in unique and creative ways, yes it then becomes an extension of our own soul for lack of a better word. And when you first came into the studio, we were talking and, and I said, you know, I used to be a big computer geek. I had the Apple IIe, the 6502 processor uh, assembly language for dummies book. And I was so obsessed with this computer. And when you told me this idea that this thing is like an extension of who we are, it all clicked for the first time. That's why I saw it that way. Yeah, 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 and, and that's that's why many people are fascinated with computers, mm. uh, and they don't necessarily realize what is the cause of that fascination. So, the ability to essentially tell a machine what to do can also be really, uh, uh, you know playing with your mind a little bit, right? <laughs> Especially if that machine does it much, much faster than you, whatever you tell them to do, which is the real advantage of computers. Computers can, can do gazillions of time faster, what for you takes 10 minutes, for example, right? Mm -hmm. so, so they are complementary to us. Mm. They're not competing with us because they don't understand anything. They, they, they just do what they do. They don't understand. Without knowing anything, without being aware of it, and they will never be aware of it. And we can talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. That, see, and that's I think the crux of the later part of your book where yeah. you kind of woke up a bit having worked in the this materialist paradigm. You know, you, you grew up in Northern Italy, it was war torn, you talk about your family, your father was a scholar and, and uh, this idea that you were fascinated with electronics and building. And by the way, there was one part of the, the book later where you started having your own kind of awakenings where you realized, oh, it's kind of the middle age crisis that we yeah. all go through where you had an experience where you remembered this kind of old memory of building a radio controlled plane, which was sort of your passion when you were young and running upstairs to show it to your father. And this is a complicated thing. And, and your dad saying, I'll be down in a minute working on his books and his scholarly stuff. And dad, are you coming? 
one minute, no, no. And then finally you giving up and going back to your room and, and kind of having suppressed that memory and then it coming back all those years later and feeling the emotion of wanting to kind of show your dad what you've yeah. done. And it was a beautiful human moment in the book that actually I found, I resonated with myself. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. yeah, so this idea then that getting back to materialism, <laughs> this, <laughs> that stuff that, you know, that stuff is real and computers, therefore, uh, if we just make them complex enough, you know, because you're working yeah. on computer brains more yes. or less, maybe they'll be aware like we are because clearly matter creates consciousness and so on. And you're arguing, I think quite compellingly in the book that that's, we're no, we're totally wrong. And in yes. that wrongness, we're doing harm to our own humanity and our future. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, we do because uh, if we believe that we are machines, we're going to behave like one, mm. you know? So, so I mean, it's as simple as that, you know, a belief of, in something is a very strong directive toward what you believe. Mm. Uh, so in 1986, I started a company called Synaptics. And at that time I wanted to make uh, computers that learn instead of being programmed. Mm. Using neural networks, which in those days were considered a bad idea by the by the by the cognoscenti of uh, you know of AI, you know the uh, you know like uh, you know basically it was it was considered a bad idea. You know, neural that, networks, that, that's right. They will never work, mm. right? So, so um, and but I wanted to do not what people do now, which is simulation of neural network, but emulation of neural network by by building physical structures they would behave like a, a neural network mm. using these uh, floating gate transistors, which are both a memory, long-term memory, that can be you know, uh, uh, written and erased, but written a little bit or erased a little bit so that you, they, they are like a synapse. Huh. They can, you, know, they, you can move them up and down and they are, you know, and, and they are, you know, and they are, uh, they are uh, um, uh, permanent, permanent memories. So as well, so uh, and they can do a multiplication and an addition. So with two transistor, you can do a multiplication in addition, have a long-term memory that you can, ch that you can change it in, in, in analog so that you have, you know. so that, that was the idea. Uh, well, it, it, you know, it was through that uh, activity that uh, in reading uh, neuroscience books in those days and trying to understand how the brain works and being concerned, or actually more than concerned, marvel that nowhere in these very thick books of, of neuroscience, the word consciousness was mentioned. <laughs> they were describing how the brain works as if my sensations and my feelings are electrical or biochemical signals. Hmm. So a true reductionist materialist yes. sort of paradigm. No, it's really about the algorithms, the electrical signals, et cetera. So yeah. if you're looking at a rose, you're seeing photons, they're triggering an electronic impulse through the retinal nerve and somehow interpreted through the complex neural yeah. network of the synapse. Yeah. Forget yeah. that it looks beautiful and red and has meaning yeah. and yeah. Yeah. So, and clearly the brain can do all of that, what you just said, right? But we have something more. We then those the signals that come out of the neural networks, we perceive them as feelings, mm. as sensations. And we know through sensations and feelings. Mm. And those are a different class of phenomena. They're not, they're, 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 nobody can explain how we feel. Mm. Computer doesn't feel anything. People promise that in the future, they will have consciousness but only because it's an extension of what they believe, that machines like us are conscious, therefore computers must be conscious, but that's, that was it. That's the only logic in that argument. There is absolutely no idea of how that is possible. Right, so that this so-called hard problem of consciousness, yes. so assuming that we believe this dominant paradigm that humans are machines made of you know, classical elements that behave algorithmically and somehow through complexity emerge the taste of yeah. chocolate or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Um, that means that we can then project, well, if we just make a computer based on similar paradigms that are eventually discoverable, yeah. that computer will have an inner life yeah. and be able to not just see a rose electronically, but to experience a rose. Yes. And that's the paradigm. That's right. And you're saying that paradigm has no evidence that this no is actually No evidence true. whatsoever. Yeah. 
it, you know, I actually bought that myself. So did I. Uh, I'm a physicist, so you, you can expect that, you know, over, over the years I became, uh, I forgot all I knew about religion and, uh, you know, <laughs> that there is a soul or whatever, right? It's so, funny how that happens, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, so uh, it, and therefore I thought, well, I should be able to make a conscious computer. And it was through that desire to understand how it would be possible to do to do that, to you know, that I understood much more about what consciousness is, because it was impossible to find a way to convert electrical signals, in the case of a computer, there are only electrical signals, into sensations and feelings. And so so that that kind of got me into, you know, into thinking uh, that you know, consciousness must be something else. And it was through that desire to know that I had an extraordinary experience of consciousness that told me that there is more to it, that if, if I thought that consciousness was just my ordinary consciousness, when you have experiences of extraordinary situations, man, you know, all bets are off. Mm. And I, I'm not talking about taking drugs. I'm no, talking no about drugs, yeah. sp spontaneous experiences. You, you talk about it in the book. That's yeah. right, and mm -hmm. that gave me this opening and this also desire to understand what is consciousness then? If, if I can experience myself as the world that, that perceives itself, that looks at itself, I mean, which is something that is mind, you know, mind twisting, you know, there must be more than even thought to consciousness. So, so let, let's, let's dig into that a little bit because th this, this to me is very interesting. The first question that comes to mind is, you're worried about how these neural networks will actually, are they conscious or not? No one else seems to be worrying about this. Why do we care whether they have awareness? In other words, why does it matter to the thinking ability of the computer or the intelligence of the computer that, it, it, that it's aware? Yes. Oh, to be able to answer that question, it took me another 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, give me a sound bite, Federico. <laughs> Can you summarize you know, it? Well, yeah, yeah, of course. But but the point is that you know it's not obvious. And in the beginning, uh, there was no no sense of what beyond feelings and sensations. What is it that consciousness does? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what what does it do? What which is exactly the question that you asked me. What what, what what's so important about consciousness? Um, you know, there are some people, some neuroscientists that, you know, they measure, they, they give you a scene for a couple of, couple of uh, you know, they, they, you see a scene for a couple of seconds, then they interrogate you on what, you know, can you describe what you saw, right? And then, uh, uh, then uh, you know, then you, you can only remember a few things. And so, so they say, well, the consciousness, you know, the bandwidth of consciousness is very small, maybe, you know, 20 bits, you know, per second or, you know, 200 bits per second, you know, so not big deal. But if you look at what you actually felt, <laughs> you don't remember because you don't have the, the memory, yeah. the short-term memory of what you saw to be able to describe it, but you actually saw a hell of a lot more that you remember two seconds later. Your experience was very rich. You only, you, you know, you 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 know, you, be, you you understood a lot of what was going on in that two seconds, but you cannot explain it to somebody that asks you silly questions like, uh, you know, was there a cat? <laughs> no, you know, and, and things are like that. You see, so so you know, even scientists don't don't have the foggiest idea of what consciousness is, and they look in the wrong place or we we ask the wrong questions. You, you know, that's a, that's the, <laughs> that little journey was the best description of how ineffable the conscious experience really can be. You cannot, you can describe, you can artists. It's the job of writers yeah. to evoke this kind of thing. Yeah. But really, look at a rose. Experience it. Oh my gosh. You yeah. can't begin the bandwidth of that. Yeah. How do you even describe it in terms of bandwidth? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Why do we continue to use, and this is a little side note, why do we continue to use the language of computers to describe how the brain works when they are not the same? But, but because, because to most people, they are considered to be the same. The computer is just a, a just, wetware. The, the brain the, is the just wetware. The computer is wetware. In fact, they use exactly that word or, you know, or, or the, you know, what the computer does is, you know, basically the, com the computer, 
you know, what the computer does is the software running in the computer. And the, you know, the consciousness is the software running in the computer. Uh, and, how, you know, what, what does that even soft, mean? The, the <laughs> software is not conscious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, the bits in memory, which, uh, you know, which is the physical manifestation of that, you know, of, of, of that, of that uh, algorithm, you know, they, they're not conscious of what they mean or what they're doing or whatever, right? So, so you know, so it's, 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 it's basically... We want we want it to be that way, mm. and we don't make the effort to understand what consciousness is. Mm. And it was only because I had this extra or extraordinary experience that I actually, you know, started. To un I wanted to understand it, and and it took twenty years, as I said, to arrive to the conclusion that consciousness cannot be a phenomenon of classical systems like a computer. Mm. A computer is a classical system. Mm. It works with bits, one or zero. And consciousness must be a quantum phenomenon, quantum phenomenon. A quantum phenomena work with qubits, a quantum bit. Quantum bits are actually, any, they represent an infinity of states ah. versus bits that represent only two states, one or zero. And a qubit in, the, in this realm manifest in our real, in our space-time, as a bit. So all you can know about that qubit, which is an infinity of states, becomes zero or one. So that tells you that there is a reality, the quantum reality, which is far, far vaster than the classical reality that is so reductive because an infinity <coughs> is mapped into one or zero. It, you know, you, <laughs> I, 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 I love the way you describe that because that is there are two realms that are on a continuum and that the quantum realm is the realm of probability and in, in, it, these almost infinite possibilities within some parameters and that manifests as, as yeah. this reality that we see yeah. in the classical world. And the fact that the computer is this classical residua yeah. of something more complex means that in and itself, cannot manifest the, the 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 intelligence or the creativity or the awareness that a creature that lives in both realms like us can yes. do yes. and and why is it important from your book what i de derived and tell me if i'm wrong is that <clears throat> intelligence true intelligence requires comprehension, in other words, an understanding, a yes. meaning that then instantly connects to past experience and meaning, yeah. and then creates a, a solution that cannot be recreated just by programming in a trillion algorithms. Yeah. And in order to do that, you need a space in which that can be experienced. Yes. And consciousness is that space. And a classical computer, which is this residua of you know um, bits, like you said, just mm -hmm. one and a zero, mm -hmm. can't do that. And and another, and again, I'm gonna go on a rant for a second just because it, uh, your book really triggered this in me. The way you describe this interaction between the classical world and the quantum world was like this. Imagine you have a coin with heads and tails and you flip it. When you see it, all you see is heads or tails. That's our classical world, yeah. on off bits. Yeah. But in the world of the quantum space where the action is actually probabilistically happening yeah. in qubits, there's an infinity of different spins and possibilities that it's going through. And all we know is, well, there's a probability it'll be 50-50 heads or tails. And so such a vast thing happening here, but what we end up seeing is just yeah. this decision. Is that, does that sound right from Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's good enough because, <laughs> you know, because, frankly, is almost impossible to imagine mm. what's going on in the you know in in the in the quantum world because the you know the quantum world can only be described in hilbert space is a space of n dimensions where n could be infinite so that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> i still consider one dimension too many <laughs> then you know so 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 you have you have uh, you know you have you have that but then each dimension is a complex number. Mm -hmm. Complex number is a real number plus an imaginary number. Mm. And imaginary numbers is is basically the, the fundamental imaginary number is i, which is the square root of minus one, 
which probably, oh, the probably a lot of people already hate probably. I because, love it, but yeah. but it, but it points to how different, yeah. how yeah, unintuitive yeah. the space is. You know, yeah, and of course, you know, no 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 real number has a you know square root of a negative number mm-hmm. is not a, a, a real number because the square of any number, whether it is positive or negative, is positive. So there is no square of a real number that is negative. <laughs> you see, so that's I. I is a symbol, stands for square root of minus one. Mm. And so this 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 Hilbert space is a unimaginable uh, because we we just we can only imagine. In fact, we can only imagine three dimensions plus time, right? I mean, right. That's that's the ordinary but, experience. But you're saying that this is actually how the universe measures out, and and quantum mechanics says that exists. And it's actually predictive of what we see in the classical space to some degree, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but for the longest time, uh, people thought that that was only a representation of something. Right. It, it wasn't real. Okay. But now we are designing quantum computers, mm. and quantum computers operate with qubits. But qubits cannot exist in our space time. So where where are the operations made? Where, you know, they. A quantum computer can can operate, you know, much much faster for certain problems than classical computers. It doesn't matter how much how fast you make a, essentially a, a classical computer; it cannot measure up because in in this quantum reality you can operate in all those possible situations simultaneously ah. because of entanglement, the property of entanglement. So. And it's, that's another, yeah. That, that we, we won't go there right, because right. it's too, too much to explain that we don't have another time. time we will, but yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but because of that, okay, you set up the problem in this space time and you get the answer in, in this, this space time. But the operation cannot occur in space time. <laughs> so there's got to be something real. If you do computation out of thin air, where, you know, is, where is it happening? Where is it happening? Okay. So there is some reality there that we are, we that I would say that only quantum computers are, you know, are forcing us to face. You know, it's not an answer question. Nobody knows what's going on. Uh, we are taking advantage of it, but we don't know what's going on. You know, uh, and that's where in your book you start to, and it's fascinating because in your book you, you, you talk about this whole painful and amazing and inductive and beautiful and strife-filled process of developing the first commercial microprocessor and then the calculator it went to <laughs> and then you donating that calculator to the Mountain View Museum of yeah. Tech. And I saw it there years yeah. ago when yeah. I was there and I didn't and I didn't know anything about you. Yeah. And and I mean, you really are the father of a lot of this stuff that we that we use now. And what you're, what, when you start to pivot in the book where you have your own experience, like you said, this very yeah. ineffable experience of opening yeah. and love, and I would tell people read about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and at some point we'll get into it more in detail, but it, it's one of those things that you can't describe so well, but you, once you feel it, you go, oh, there's something going on. Yeah. Then you're talking about quantum computers where there is this realm where things are are infinitely possible, there's probability and it's different than the, in the classical realm that we're used to, where yes. I know you're physical here, I think you're made of stuff and yeah. predictable through Newtonian laws. In fact, if I had enough computer power, if that's all true, I could predict all of the past and all the future by knowing this, the, the positions and spins and momentum yeah. of every particle now. It's yeah. that reductionistic. Yes. But we know now that's not true, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. yeah the, the, the idea of uh, the Laplace Demon. That was, uh, you know, uh, that was the the idea that you just expressed, which is if we know the initial conditions of everything, we can cal- we can compute everything both in the future and in the past, and and many people still believe this, however, because they say, well, yeah, this is essentially valid in the classical world, even if in the classical world we have chaotic system which require you to know the initial conditions to a precision which is impossible to achieve because it would violate the Heisenberg's indeterminacy principle. Mm. But the Heisenberg's indeterminacy principle is class is, is, is quantum. Mm-hmm. And so so people say, yeah, but it's quantum. So, you know, classical would we could do it, you know. Because it'll average out. Uh, it'll it it'll just Whatever. average out. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course that's not true. Okay. Uh-huh. But the point though is that classical physics uh, describes reality as if reality was real. 
In other words, you know, is a, there is an object that moves in space and time, it goes through a trajectory, and you can tell every point of the way where the, this object goes, because that's reality. So it's a thing so that's It's moving. about ontology. Yeah. Classical physics describes the ontology of the world. The being, the true thing yeah, in and this, of itself. Yeah, yes. the stuff of which yeah. the world is made that right. interacts in certain ways according to certain laws, which are deterministic. But quantum physics is not that way at all. Mm. The quantum physics is epistemic. Epistemic. It, it can only tell you what you can know about a system which is vaster than what you can measure. Mm -hmm. Because to describe this system, you have to describe all the possible states that the system exists in, which are in superposition mm -hmm. in the quantum reality, and the entanglement of these states, which have no correspective in the classical world, mm -hmm. okay? Then, you have the collapse of the wave function, which is the, you know, the sort of the, the mantra. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, it, basically, the, when you actually go to find out what, you know, what uh, you're going to measure, all, of all these many states that were in superposition, you will measure only one. Mm. But the theory doesn't tell you which one you're going to measure, so you don't know. Mm. So the description of quantum physics tells you all that you can possibly know, and all that you can possibly know is probabilistic, not deterministic, probabilistic. Because only one of those will show, if you repeat that experiment many, many times, you will verify that the probability is what the theory is telling you. Mm -hmm. But that also requires that you can repeat the experiment, which is not necessarily possible in complicated situations. Mm. Try to repeat an experiment on a cell, right? on a living cell that has uh, 10 to the 14 atoms. You know, how are you going to prepare these cells which are in exactly the same quantum state to repeat the experiment? You cannot do it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can do it with particles, you know, and so on and so forth, uh, electrons or atoms, but. So th this quantum, um probability means that you can't, you can say probabilistically, but you can't say exactly what you'll find. Yeah. Now, in your argument then you're saying, well, in this quantum space is where the more, how do you even say this? You know, the hard problem of consciousness is actually yes. s to some degree yeah. solved in that this is a space that has all this vast depth and complexity yes. and that the reason that you can't predict what's coming out the other side beyond probability is yes. that what's happening here to some degree is a free will decision of whatever is fundamental to the world. In other words, what is the true ontology of yes. the universe? What's it really made of? If, it, if it's not made of the stuff made of bits uh, that we measure in the classical world, what is it? And that stuff spans the quantum space and the classical space and creates us and yes. we're this interface. And, and free will generates this true objective creation that then we measure as randomness or probability or something. Yeah. But, or am I totally crazy? No, 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 it's okay. That, that's, that's one of the aspects, but there is another aspect, which mm. is the qualia. The fact that we have, qualia is the fact that we have an experience. Qualia made, is an experience, made, yeah, right, yeah. The, the feelings, you know, the taste of chocolate or the taste of, Wine, I'm, I'm more I prefer wine, wine myself, yeah. <laughs> I'm using Don's example of chocolate because he, see, he doesn't drink. <laughs> but, you know, but, but the point is that qualia in the model that I have developed with Professor Dariano, uh, it will be published shortly, in that model, syst certain systems that are in a pure state, that's a very special kind of state in, in quantum physics, uh, again, to explain it would take a long time, but, mm -hmm. but take my word for it, there are pure quantum states. We are postulating that the system that is in that state actually experiences that state. Mm. So the pure quantum state is the only the informational aspect of a reality that also has a semantic aspect, which is the feeling of that state witness the fact that that pure quantum state cannot be cloned, cannot be copied, is private, 
exactly like your consciousness is private. Uh -huh. I cannot know what you're feeling. I can only know what you tell me. Right. But what you tell me uses classical symbols, words, sounds, vibrations. Vibrations. But I don't I I cannot share your experience. That your experience and so is mine, so is everybody else, is completely private. In a classical computer, a bit can be copied. Right. A bit is public. A bit can be read without disturbance. In a in the quantum world, any any time you take a qubit and you read it, it changes it. You have a one or a zero yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a certain probability, right? Right, right, right. So so you you see you you see so now we have now we have a a we have a a, a how to say a a way to understand that the property that we actually observe or conscious are reflected in these properties of pure quantum states. So, okay. And the key thing is that when you are in that state, you have a definite experience. It is not a probability. That state, as far as you are, that system, that quantum system is in that state. It knows that it feels that way. Mm. You don't know how I feel how I feel because first of all, that information cannot be copied, it cannot be, no, no, no one can look at that. Mm. Nobody can know. In fact, that, that information doesn't even exist for the person, for the self, for the entity, for the system that experiences it. Mm. It is the experience of that, of that, what we call pure state, which is the knowing. It's the, the semantics, is the information, is the ontology. Yeah. So that system, is in an ontic state. Meaning primary being, it is truth. It, it, it is yeah. what it, it, right. it, it is experiencing that state. Right. Looking from the outside, I can only give a probability to that state because the system could have been in, in many other states. And so I could only know the probability for each of the possible states that this system is in the quantum state. That's all I can know from the outside. Mm. That's so. The, the state then is epistemic for an observer. So there is an owner which has the experience and everybody else is, you know, has an epistemic knowledge, which is only, a, a, you know, a, a set of probabilities for all the possible states. So epistemic meaning the, no, the knowledge of instead of ontology meaning yeah. the actual thing. Yeah, what I can right. know about what something. What I can know about right. something. So, 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 so you've added interiority now to this. You're yes. at, you've added this, right. this primary sense of, of isness of experience to this state that then when you look at it from outside, it, it shows up probabilistically yes. as a collapsed. Yeah, it collapsed, yeah, collapsed yeah. wave function. Collapsed, right, right. It collapses. The voodoo that they yeah. talk about, yeah. 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 So, so the, you know, it is clear that the fact, for example, that we cannot know the state that we are in, in this real world, we can only probe and find signals, okay? But no experience in the brain, only electrical, elect, you know, and biochemical signals. That is telling you that consciousness cannot be classical because a classical information can be copied. You should be able to copy it. So if, if, you know, if an experience was just information, classical information, you should be able to copy it. Right, but I should you be cannot, able But I, you cannot, I, I cannot be, I cannot have your experience. You cannot have mine. You know, you know each, of, each person has its own private reality, private experience. And and this idea then that that really argues against this reductionist idea that material somehow emerges consciousness because then you could copy the material and emerge the same consciousness in theory. But if I cloned you molecule for molecule, yeah. it, it, which also would be a little tricky because of the quantum. No, you cannot do you it. You can't do it. No. Because the cells yeah. themselves are not classical you, you, purely. You, you cannot right? do it, but, 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 but if, if you cannot clone a quantum state. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. So it can't be done. You so cannot, even the thought experiment is done. Yeah, no. Yeah. You cannot do it. So then what's interesting then is, and we're going to take it from this very heady idea and bring it back to something simple. So we could say, so then if, 
if this stuff, like if this book yeah. is not the ontological primary thing, in other words, it's yeah. not really a yeah. thing, it's a symbol. It's it's a collapsed wave function that we yeah. see, you know, of, mm -hmm. of a bunch of different yeah. quantum states. Then what is fundamental? What is the primary? What is fundamental is the experience itself, is consciousness. Consciousness. Yes. And that. In, in fact, in our model, we we say consciousness is fundamental. Right. Then quantum information emerges, or you know, quantum information uh, uh, supervenes on consciousness emerges from consciousness. So it's backwards from what the uh, materialists yeah, yeah, Of course. Yeah. But but then quantum information supervenes or is out of which emerges. Classical. Quant no, quantum, quantum physics. Oh. Quantum physics, you know, quantum physics, the way it is done is not pure information. It's not pure quantum information. It's, it's, it's also has also some ontology in it. Mm. It's mixed up. It's both both ontological Electron and, and, cloud. And, and, and epistemic. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. but mostly epistemic. And but then from from quantum from quantum physics emerge classical physics. In, so in in other words, we we have a, a series of uh, Russian dolls. Yeah, nested hierarchy. In, in nested hierarchy. Yeah, uh, you know where quantum physics quantum physics is basically fundamentally is information quantum information mm. in this model. Uh, and, uh, and, and quantum information is really the outer aspect of a reality that also has an inner aspect made of meaning, made of, and the meaning is carried by qualia, by sensations and feelings. Right, so that's the consciousness at the core. Yes. So if, if the stuff of the universe- That's how we know. That's how we know. Yep. And so if the stuff of the universe, the primary component of the universe is awakeness, awareness, yep. consciousness, it then manifests uh, through this nested series of, of, of dolls, mm -hmm. like you say, from quantum information to quantum physics to classical physics. Yep. And the way that you and I know each other's experience yep. Is in the largely in the classical realm to start. So I yes. see you as this image. Yep. I hear this the sound in the ear, but then it is translated into qualia experiences that are mine and mine alone. Yeah. That then connect to meaning, emotion, a sense of perhaps purpose and direction. That like, to bring it back to the computer analogy, that classical only computer system yep. that we built can never have. Yes. Yeah. In, in other words, the the computer um, is a purely classical system, but we are a quantum classical system. Mm. Our cells are not classical. They are quantum classical. So it's just a hybrid. Of... So it's a hybrid. Uh -huh. And our, therefore our body is actually connected with a quantum system, which is our consciousness. That doesn't, cannot manifest in this, directly in this world, can interface with our body. So my experience is not in this physical world, like a cube, like a qubit cannot be in this physical world. Here we only have a bit. Okay? Yeah. There we have a qubit, and the qubit, just to you know, for, sim for simplicity, as as a as a sense of itself in in a way, right? Uh, an elementary sense of itself, and and so the consciousness and the experience of our world doesn't exist in our world, even if it is an experience of a classical object, because the experience is a conscious, experience means feelings and sensations. That's what experience, a thought is also an experience, a spiritual feeling or an, you know, is, is, is also an experience. Those can only exist in the quantum world. So we think that what we experience happens here because we interact with classical objects here, but no, the experience is somewhere else. Is exactly like when you are controlling an avatar in a computer. When you have an avatar in a computer that you control. Virtual and, reality. Which is mm -hmm. virtual reality. So, so it's in virtual reality, you think that you are you know, playing, that you are really there if you, you know, especially if you are a kid, you know, you get so. Uh, lost. You know, yeah, lost in identified the game. In identify the game. With, with the avatar in the game and that reality that you forget that you know, soup is ready, probably <laughs> mom will call you, <laughs> whatever. But so, so in that case, you do not, you know, you, you think that you are, that you are the avatar. Yeah. But in fact, 
your experience is in the body that controls the avatar. But then I'm saying, no, even the experience of you playing a game <laughs> is in that self, the real system, which is in the quantum world, because you cannot experience anything even in the physical world, which is quantum classical. You have to be a, a quantum system in a pure state. Let me, um, let me repackage <laughs> what you just said and see if, if it makes sense, because that's... It's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a mouthful, but it's, it's, it's okay. I'm gonna repackage this and then you're gonna tell me where I'm wrong. So many people talk about life being a virtual reality. Yeah. And that means that there's some simulator, some alien yeah. <laughs> system that's creating this thing that we're then going through. And when we unplug from that matrix, we're in another matrix. Yeah. And uh, here we are as another body in another yeah. matrix programming a very yeah. complex computer because yeah. as we know, consciousness emerges from stuff. Yeah. Okay, so that's paradigm that a lot of people think when they talk about we're living in a simulation. Yeah. What you're saying is something radically different. Absolutely. You are saying that the simulation and, and this is all metaphor, okay? We're not saying this exactly, but this is metaphor. We're saying the simulation is the classical world. Yeah. This is the world we're walking through that we yeah. think is real, that this yeah. book is real, that yeah. you're real. And we talk to each other, we exchange information in yeah. this system across the, yeah. the game. Yeah. But really, what we act, the, the body that's controlling this game yeah. is actually the quantum world awareness that we fundamentally are yeah. that interfaces with this classical world through yeah. a quantum yeah. classical hybrid, which is our body and our cells. That's correct. And this interface is the avatar that we wear that yeah. allows us to simultaneously have an interior experience of love and connection and meaning and purpose yes. while having an exterior experience of the classical world that allows us to know other entities that are exactly the same as us, but a different perspective, yeah. manifesting a different avatar. Yeah. And the world itself is the collective manifestation of all these things interacting. Yes. Does that sound That's right? That's perfectly right. Yeah. Damn. You, you got it right, no, I got it wrong. Next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, this to me is fascinating because yeah. There, we have this intuition and you can have like, you've had spiritual experiences where you step out of that body and either it's a near death experience or it's a sense of unitary consciousness or some people get it through psychedelic drugs. The sense that you suddenly unplugged from your individual avatar and gone back to a higher mind that's behind that. Yeah. And so again, we can't really, we can say that those experiences are real and they're ineffable, they're hard to describe, but it's tough to say, well, then we can science that because yeah. science is all about the measurement of the classical uh, world. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the crucial difference between the typical simulator, you know, the, the universe as a simulator and that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Or the, the virtual reality world and so on, is that if all there was is a computer, classical computer, that computer cannot, could not be conscious, could not have an experience. Mm -hmm. The experience is the one that actually creates, because, because we haven't gone there yet, but that world, the quantum world is creative. Yes. And we'll get to it. Yes. But, so take that for good for now. Yeah. So that world is creative. We have created the computers. The, the computer has not created us as far as I know. <laughs> okay. Right. So, so we have created the computer and we haven't created the computer by random variations in selection, but by intelligent think thoughts, creative thoughts, and variate, you know, so those created variations that were better than what was there before, not random, better, and the selection of the marketplace that accepted what we did. And so through a process of good variations, instead of random variation, good variation in selections, we have created the computers that we have today. So those computers, however, they are all classical and they cannot be conscious, but we are the ones giving them consciousness by telling them what to do, making decisions for them because we have comprehensions, because we know what we're doing. And so our, our, our opportunity here is to use intelligently our artificial intelligence, our, robot, our robots and so on, 
instead of being scared that they are going to to be better than us and they are going to you know kill us or whatever, which is which is silly stuff. Okay, AI is great, but it's great only, only if we work with it and in a cooperative way. Not if we put ourselves in competition as machines against another machine, which is what the 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 mythology of the day goes. Okay, if that goes that way, it's because somebody of ill intent is behind those machines mm-hmm. and wants to control us. If we believe that we are machines, that 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 is the fundamental truth from all of this is that this mistaken paradigm that humans are machines. Yes, and and I got to say this. This is this is your processor, the, the Z80. <laughs> this is the, the Zilog, that, that was a company you founded after Intel, after you worked at Intel and Fairchild. This incredibly beautiful and complex thing, which is still a classic, which powered the ColecoVision, which I played as a kid, <laughs> which is, okay, that came from the minds and creativity. It did of, not self-assemble. It did not self-assemble. <laughs> it did not probabilistically appear. It, it was not you know, some Heisenberg uh, uh, equation that collapsed in a wave function and just happened to yeah. hit all the, no. It was the yeah. result of human creativity that yes. came from a conscious team of people that you were and, leading. And comprehension. And, and comprehension. The comprehension and intention and purpose. So explain comprehension to me a little bit more because this is where people say, well, a computer can understand all the math and stuff, right? But it's yeah. n- that's not what it's doing. No, no. No, th- there is a fundamental difference. Uh, I, I guess that the, you know, the, the best way to explain it is, uh, you know, when when uh, uh, the, they made the first experiment with uh, self-driving cars. Ah, that's a good example. Uh, yeah. They, you know, there was there was a an unfor- unfortunately some some someone was killed. Mm-hmm. The person that was killed was uh, was he had a bicycle and he was walking with the with the bicycle, mm-hmm. and the computer was only given examples of people on the bicycle mm-hmm. pedaling on the bicycle, not walking with their bicycle next. And so he didn't recognize it. And it, it went through him and, or her and killed that person. Mm. Why? The computer doesn't understand anything. There is no consciousness. Consciousness, because understanding is not algorithmic. It, is, it goes beyond algorithm. It is a creative process. You get it. You, have you ever considered when when you you know you have been trying to understand something complicated and then at one point you say, ah, now I got it, right? Eh, you know, you have that that the moment of joy, moment. right? Moment of joy, right? Right. Why? Why is that? Because something got connected. Something that was disconnected before got connected into a meaning, a new meaning. Comprehension is about meaning, is a semantic property of reality, which doesn't exist in the symbolic reality, which is the physical reality or the classical reality. Classical reality is just symbolic, period. There is no meaning, there is nothing, just things hitting each other, doing whatever they do according to laws, which are algorithms. They are deterministic laws in classical physics. They are algorithms. That is the reality that we think we are. That's wrong. We are that other reality which understands, which gets meaning, gets joy out of life. Love people, love a a dog, whatever. That is the difference. So comprehension is nothing to do with the recognition of a symbol. Even the recognition of a symbol in a reasonably simple context, which is what AI can do and can do better than, when, when, when the problem is reducible to that, AI can do better than us. Mm -hmm. But it's exactly because they can do better than us in certain things, the mechanical intelligence, not the non-algorithmic intelligence, but the algorithmic intelligence, they can do better than us. The non-algorithmic intelligence, they can do, they can do nothing. They can do not at all. They can do not at all. Not at all. That's, and, it's blind. And your argument is they will never be able to they do They will that. never, because they are, they they, are classical a system. Classical system. And so it's, it's akin to yeah. saying this, you're in a virtual game. 
you're, you're wearing an avatar, you're walking around in this virtual world and you decide I'm gonna build a computer in my yes. virtual world and this yeah. computer is gonna be aware. Yeah. It's never gonna happen because yeah. the computer is made of symbols in the virtual yes. world. Yeah. Our real world is equivalently made of yeah. symbols, the yeah. classical world, yeah. but the true inductive, creative, imaginary intelligence that comprehends, that has meaning, that has, even a, a telos or a purpose it's going towards, which is increased knowledge or understand whatever it is, that world is the driver of the avatar, which yeah. is this hybrid between the worlds. And so when we talk about computers being awake, never will happen. No. When we talk about us being awake, that could happen. <laughs> well, I hope I hope it does, it does happen a little more <laughs> than what is happening kind now. Of asleep. <laughs> because when we believe we are machines. Now, here here's an interesting thing so Kurt Vonnegut, uh American author, real famous author, wrote a book called Breakfast of Champions in the early 70s. And the premise of the book was a guy who reads a science fiction novel that convinces him that humans are machines, yeah. that we're robots. Yeah. And he loses his mind because he can't he can't reconcile his own inner experience with yeah. the fact that we're all machines yeah. and he goes on a murderous rampage. Yeah. And I think that that's extreme, but it, it is the equivalent of what we've done in our in our enlightenment physio you yeah. know, enlightenment thinking, which is we are machines. Once we figure out the machines, we'll figure out consciousness. Then we'll figure out how to bottle love. And yeah. instead, we have mental illness gone wild. We have a reductionist yeah. medical establishment yeah. that says well, we'll throw a pill at a problem that's yeah. so complex. Yeah. And and so that's why this matters, right? Yeah, you're now in your fourth life. <laughs> the book goes through all these different lives. Here you are building radio control planes in Italy. Then here you are learning physics. And then here you are building microprocessors and an entrepreneur. And then here you are going, what does it all mean? Yeah. It's all consciousness all the way up and down. Yeah. And it can be described in scientific terms. And we should look for that instead of trying to reduce everything to non-existent yeah. symbols. Yeah. It's almost as if we had a vested interest in being machines. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, come on! I mean, wh why do you want to be a machine? You know, I, I mean, that beats me, frankly. I mean, why does anybody want to be a machine? You know, I, I mean, so, you know, it's, it's actually mind-boggling to me to to think about people just accepting this without, you know, without any critical thought. It's easier to be a machine. Of course, it is easier. Yeah. You can but, be a, you can be asleep at the wheel and be a zombie. Of course, you know you can you know you take a pill to calm down. You take a pill to wake up. You, yeah, it, it's, well, but 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 that's what that's what you what you end up being if you accept that's right being a machine. That's right. Then you accept self fulfilling better machines to control you, and mm -hmm. behind those better machines there are people that you know like to monetize you. Okay? <laughs> yeah, t t tell me about this social yeah. media, for yeah. example. Great example. So I mean, we're in the th Silicon Valley. Th th this is what's going on. Yeah, and we need we need to wake up to that fact that we, that we have, we are, we are not of this world. We are of this world and not of this world. Mm -hmm. I think some famous person said that mm -hmm. before me. Mm -hmm. But but you know but you know we we are both. We are quantum and classical, mm -hmm. and but the quantumness survives death. Ah. And that's another, and not, you might be whole happy show. to know, yeah. <laughs> right? You might be happy to know that you don't need to download your consciousness in a computer to live forever. First of all, because the computer cannot be conscious. Right. Second, you don't even know what experience is or where it is to download it, okay? Mm. But most importantly, because you don't have to, because you don't die. Mm. Who you are, who you really are, is not the body. The body is an interface. Mm. And who you are, is a being that once exists cannot be destroyed. So that is, to me, that's a pretty important thing to th try to find out if it's true mm -hmm. on your own, because you know, I don't want you to believe me. Mm -mm. You need to find out for yourself. Mm. But man, do you want to be a machine because you believe somebody that told you that you are a machine? How can a machine understand anything, just think about it, you know, just an algorithm that goes through its paces 
we are, we are making attribution to that algorithm. We say, oh, you recognize the move. That's a good move, you recognize it. No, it didn't recognize anything. It just, you know, it just went through a bunch of, you know, exhaustively to a bunch, you know, a game, a game, by the way, can, you can much more easily go exhaustively through all the possibilities because the computer is so much faster than us. Right. And then somehow you find the right move. Right, and, then, and it looks brilliant. And then it looks brilliant. It looks brilliant, right. Be only because we are not made like a machine, okay? I mean, it, you know, if you think about it, it is amazing that we can even, you know, play against the computer, you know, and sometimes win, given that we, you know, we are so poor when it comes to mechanical intelligence, ah, okay. algorithmic intelligence. We were not built to be algorithmic. We were built to know through experience, not to know nothing, which is if we, if we were a pure machine, we couldn't know anything. We simply would go through the paces, whatever, whatever are the paces that we were either exposed to because we were given that data or we even took it ourselves. But then we, you know, it's almost a random walk. That is because consciousness and comprehension go together and without comprehension, you go through random walks. But of course, that's exactly what many scientists are telling us. The life has no meaning, and the only way to have creativity is to go through random, random variations and selection. Do, do you think, uh, I, I love it. I mean, you're preaching to the choir, obviously, and a lot of people will say, but well, of course, this is wishful thinking. We just wanna believe that because we're humans and we're so human-centric and so on and so forth. But the truth is, I think, it's funny, it just made me think about the middle age crisis yeah. that many of us go through. I went through four of them probably, <laughs> where it is this awakening where you look at the material world and go, this has brought me no joy. It has brought me suffering. It's a constant struggle. And when I look inside myself, I see this vast open thing looking for meaning yeah. that's creative, but is not allowed to be by the mechanization of what I'm doing. Yes. So in order to wake up, I better either have to sacrifice this or transcend it and both look scary and hard and then you struggle. Yeah. And and I feel like it's pointing to this idea that you, you, one thing you said we'd get back to, which I think we should now is this idea of creativity, of new of novelty entering the universe because yes. in a reductionist mechanistic world, yes. nothing new exists. Nothing. Nothing's created. It's, it's, just a, it's just a new combination of things. New combination of whatever was there. There's, whatever is there. How is consciousness, that quantum side of consciousness that we are different than that? Well, because, because qubits, let's talk about uh, quantum information, uh, you know, the, you, you can entangle qubits. You know, so when you entangle qubits, they have something in common and something in common that is so powerful that it, it, even if you take those two particles apart, once you measure one, immediately without waiting for a signal to propagate at the speed of light, the other one changes immediately as if there was no space and time. Mm -hmm. So that property of, of entanglement allows you to create new states that never before existed. And that once they are created, they are no, they can no longer be expressed as combination of previous states, as, as you know, a regular combination. So, so, you know, so in other words, you can create, and of course that solves what is called the combination problem right. of, of uh, you know, of panpsychism. Panpsychism is the idea that uh, everything is conscious. Okay, but panpsychism applied to classical objects, classical structures, doesn't work. It has this problem, combination problem. How do you no add up? Creativity. Right. No creativity. No creativity. Because yeah. a bunch of it, electrons with inner, inner lives, it, how do they add up to a brain? The, right. the whole is, there is no whole in the sense that there is something new mm. because the whole is simply the sum of the parts. Right. And I'm not talking about algebraic sum, but the combination of the parts. Got okay, it. so the combination of the parts is, is the new thing, but <laughs> that's that's not, you know, wh when you have a, a whole which is more than the sum of the parts, mm. you need to be in the quantum domain. 
This cannot happen in the classical physics domain. So a cell, a human cell. A human cell is in both areas and can be, can be creative. And I believe is creative. There would not have been the evolution that we are seeing if there was not creativity. I mean, now we attribute that creativity to random variation and selection. Mm -hmm. I say no. Mm. No, those cells are conscious. They are connected with conscious entities in the, in the quantum world. And those quantum entities are actually in part controlling what those cells do. The cells are the quantum entities uh, avatars in a way, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, and, 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 but, but those entities are not all, all powerful. They can do whatever they want. No, they, they, they also have to learn. They learn through this process. So this process appears as, as variations evolution. in selection. Uh, so, so you use- but, but the variations are not random. They are, they, are, they are the best variation that those entities can figure out. Like when we solve a problem, we make mistakes, but little by little we understand more, and then eventually we had the right solution, right? Mm -hmm. So we made variations. The, each variation is a little, is intelligent, is done by comprehension. Mm -hmm. And still, we don't get it all in one shot. You know, it's not a, this is not creationism. In other words, you right, know, right. It's I, not I, intelligent design it's, it's, in a it's, by it's, a top-down creator. Uh, absolutely. It's, right. it's, you, know, you know, I just want to dis distance yeah, I was myself from that you. Yeah, yeah. point of view because that point of view is completely, you know, wrong and unacceptable in my point of view because that basically, you know, there is a there is some god that creates everything and is an instant creation. And but that, that's not what I'm talking about at all. Mm. So you know, I'm talking about I'm talking about variations. That are, con that are actually based on comprehension. Mm. Comprehension is not all powerful. You have to, you know, like look at ourselves. We, we don't know do, everything. Yeah. We, you know, we understand a little bit, step at a time, a little bit. You know, it took, it took me 30 years to figure out that, you know, this model and it may still have a lot of things wrong. So, you know, but made a lot of progress in, in 30 years, right? Same way, same way it works. And, you know, and just imagine what it would take for a living cell to self-assemble. Ah, you know, we, we don't know how is that possible. No, nobody has have come even close to explaining how a living, the first living cell came to be through random variation or, you know, or constrained by, you know, by environments, but still essentially random variation and, and, and selection. It, it, it doesn't work. There are too many possibilities. Besides, there are quantum entities that you're trying to assemble together into a system. They're not even classical. So, so I mean, all bets are off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so one thing you pointed out here, I mean, by the way, that, that's a whole, what you just talked about is a whole discussion. That's like a four hour discussion. Yeah. And even then you're only scratching the surface of it. And I think you're on to something very important, which is the nature of things being made of these conscious units, what Don Hoffman calls conscious agents, yeah. all the way up and all the way down from yeah. a one bit simplest yeah. conscious yeah. unit all, yeah. the way, yeah. all the way up. And yeah. a cell is a manifestation yeah. of complexity yeah. of those. Yeah. But, but by the way, there is a fundamental difference here that yeah, yeah. I should point out. You know, uh, Don Hoffman believes that the conscious units start very si extremely simple. Right, one okay. bit conscious agent. Well, yeah. Like a one bit. Right. Okay. And he also believes that those, you know, he doesn't believe that uh, that those consciousness units have to be quantum. Uh, That's a fundamental difference between what Don Hoffman I believes see. and yeah. what I believe. So I was gonna ask, yeah. You know, so in, in, my, in, my, in my model, a consciousness, what I call consciousness unit, uh, is a much vaster entity in the quantum world, mm. it, it needs to be already what I call a part whole. Part whole. A mm -hmm. part whole. Mm -hmm. So it, is, it has the potential of, you know, an, an infinite potential, okay? And so, so it has the potential of the whole. Interesting. So it, it has the potential of the whole, but it's also a part of a But, but it's also a part, a, huh. a part of, it, of, of, of one, what I call one. What you call one whole. in the book, yes. Yeah, in the book, yeah. yeah. It's the everything. Yeah, this yeah right, the everything, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, so first of all, it has to be quantum, cannot be classical, mm -hmm. and uh, it has to it has to be of a level of sophistication to start with, mm -hmm. which would be like a cell. The, the simplest, in this world, the simplest conscious entity is a cell, mm -hmm. a living cell. Mm -hmm. There is, you know, everything else is, there is only symbols. Right. You know, the, the, you know, stones or, you know, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm not a panpsychist in the sense that everything is conscious. Yes, everything is conscious, but, 
but the expressions in this physical world of that consciousness uh, uh, can be it themselves conscious or not. Right. So, right. Okay. So, right. so a stone is 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 not this. an expression. Of itself. Right. That is not conscious. This is not conscious. Yeah. yeah. But, but it is made, made of conscious entities. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So it's a yeah. symbol that conscious yeah. entities yeah. use to communicate made of experience. Yeah. 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 Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense because I think one of the concerns, you know, Don says, well, this is a this is an in our interface pointing to a network of conscious agents that we don't have access to their interiority. Yeah. But we're saying you're saying, well, no, it's actually there are bigger conscious agents that are generating this as yeah. a symbol and it, it's not necessarily aware itself. Yeah. 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 Which intuitively yeah. feels more right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's like uh, you know, it's like uh I, I use the example in the book of, of, a cr of a crowd of people. Right. You know, so in a crowd of people, every entity is conscious. Right. Okay. But the crowd qua crowd is not conscious. So, say, say that again? The, 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 the crowd as crowd. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, you're, you and your Latin. <laughs> you smart people invent microprocessors, write books, come here, teach me about the nature of reality. How dare you come in here and be smarter than me? So, so, <laughs> so, the, so the crowd as yeah. crowd. Yeah, the crowd as crowd, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have a consciousness. You know, in mm -hmm. other words, there is no entity called crowd right. that can decide, let's go over there. Right. Or let's do this. Right. You know, uh, you know, if that were to happen, is really a spontaneous agreement among conscious entities. Uh, but it's not that the crowd itself as a self or uh, as an entity. You see, but 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 for example, the emergence of an entity that can control a whole, that can control the parts, like in our case, is again only. It's a creative phenomenon that can only happen in the quantum world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because a classical system cannot do that mm. the, because the whole is just the sum of the parts. You know, in classical physics, there is no, there is no top down causation. It's only bottom up. Yeah, little particles assemble and- They, they assemble, yeah. you know, you can explain the, the you can explain the, the, the uh, what happens at the top, mm -hmm. at, at the total system by what happens by what happens in the parts right. that in other words the description the description of the parts is a complete description of the whole mm. Mm. in in quantum physics that's not the case mm. okay the the whole is more than the parts mm. and mm. that's the point and you know so a, a term that you use part whole uh philosopher ken wilbur uses the term holon Mm -hmm. Which is similar. Yes, yeah, similar. Similar yeah. thing. And yeah. the idea that holons, each emergent complexity in the hierarchical levels of holons yeah. mm -hmm. is bigger than the sum of the holons that make it up. So it's the same idea that, that uh, you know, like if we're made of cells, yeah. the human body it, it actually manifests as something that's not a combinatorial thing of ourselves. Yeah. It's something beyond that, that emerges a new reality. And yeah. that in itself, is a creative process. Absolutely. That's creation, that's yeah. evolution. Evolution is a, almost an, yeah. imagina an imagination of new things that have yeah. never existed. Yeah. And, and you could say, and I'm gonna get weird and political for a second, but you could say that even human schools of thought, like we started out as tribal, animalistic, yeah. fight each other, power, yeah. to go to hierarchical, you know, Catholic church yeah. hierarchy, yeah. to then go to uh, capitalist, rationalist, meritocracy, yeah. to go to pluralistic, multicultural, those worldviews emerged. They did not exist prior to being right. collectively imagined mm -hmm. and brought yeah. into reality. So yeah. it's a constant creative process. Yeah, it's not like we're finding these things; they're yeah. emerging yeah. and being created. But yeah. you know, it, it it is not out of the question that with this new model, they could have been imagined in the quantum reality because these entities interact also in the quantum reality, right? Oh, how does that and work? So, yeah. Well, well, yeah, I mean, so so, so you know, they're not islands, right? They, they communicate with each other and so on. So Through symbols. Through, through, through quantum symbols. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so, 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 so then, you know, what we see here is in part influence, but what they discover there. Mm. And so, they are learning too. So you know, the point is that there isn't. Oh, uh, let's do this. Boom. Right? You know, no, no, no. I mean, it, it's a, it's an. They are, you know, in my model, 
the purpose, the purpose. of one yes. is to know itself. itself. Yeah. Okay, which yeah. is, I'm not the first to say this, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, but the purpose of one is to know itself, which, which, and of course, to know itself, you need to experience, right? Right. Knowing is based on experience. Not, it's not about repeating symbols. Reading a book without understanding and repeating it like a computer would do, you know, that's not, that's not knowing. Mm. There, is, there is no knowing there. It's just imitation, repeating. Okay, so there is, again, you know, the idea that comprehension is not of computers is fundamental. And of course, people that are working in AI now are finding out that those neural networks, they can only go so far, mm. but then when you get to complicated situations, the computer cannot figure out what to do because, because it never had an example of that because they need an example of everything. In fact, they need many examples of everything in order to learn something. Whereas humans need like what, a one, couple. One, one example. One example. I, you know, Human walking a bike. Yeah. Don't hit that. That's right. That's a conscious creature. Yeah, you, Bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even if it's the first time that you that, that you see a human walking with a bike, and you're, you're, you're not going to say, "Well, you know, I, you, you know, that doesn't exist." Boom. You don't right. need a memory to yeah. to, to go. Don't hit it. That's yeah. right. Right. So right. right. So you see, th 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 those are the things that uh, that that uh, people don't 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 understand because. We, we have been indoctrinated mm. by, to, first of all, to think that we are machines. Mm. Second of all, the classical, the classical world is essentially all there is. Real. Qu yeah, the real stuff and, and quantum is kind of, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. of Voodoo. course you have to put up with it, but, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but really, you know, the, the, the real world is the classical world. Right. And so, and, and there is, and so if it's a classical world, there is no free will. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, forget soul. There is, there is it's all determined it's all because de you can all, measure the spin yeah, and the yeah, yeah. Yes, there is. There is this. You know, this. You know, chaotic systems that you know, kind of a pain in the ass. But, but you know, but predictably, not big deal. Not yeah. big deal, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so essentially, you know, it's like it was. You know, we we don't want to change. You know that 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 is the mindset right now, and uh, and is you know, and that mindset is actually is actually devastating mm. to, our, to, to who we are because it's basically saying that there is nothing to spirituality, mm. there is nothing more than just being a machine. Mm. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's so devastating if you think about it. You know what I think this does, I agree 100%, it's nihilistic. It's, it, it, it reduces what we are, what we know we are. This is the thing, it's not, it's not like we're blind to this. Yeah. We wake, we're born with this. Yeah. Like it's our birthright. You say it in the book. Yeah. Our birthright is consciousness, yeah. it's awareness. Yeah. It, it, so we're born with it, we see it, and then we're told we're machines, and then we're actually treated to some de yeah. degree like we're machines, yeah. and we're commercialized and productized yeah. and monetized yeah. and, and, and so on. And then what happens? We either feel this dissonance, yeah. We become depressed. We go down these routes, or you know, we have middle age crises. Yeah. Or I think some people turn back to earlier religious doctrine and say, "Well, yeah. I find meaning in that." Yeah. And you know what? That hey, that's better than be be better than, than better pills. than we're robots. Better than yeah, pills. better than pills, right? Yeah. Okay. But I but you're saying there may even be a higher game, which is when we realize that we're all made of this stuff, and this is what we are, and death is this thing, yeah. and life is this thing. Yeah, we wake up. Yeah, and, and besides, if you are a machine, see, see, you are essentially controlled by that by that mantra. You know, you are a machine mm. because because ultimately, then, if you are a machine, there is no purpose. And in fact, that you know, most physicists would say there's no purpose. The, the, the universe has no purpose, no mm. meaning. Mm. Right? It's all chaos or random randomness, and you know, and so so if that is what you believe, which there is no there is no evidence that it is that way. In fact, the evidence is the opposite because if you look inside instead of <laughs> looking only outside, right. you will find evidence that is not so. Right. But the physicists and the doctors and others will say there is only the outside. That's right. Because right. if you look only, if you believe that there is only the, outs the outside, you will never look inside, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, only suffering to you know to the nth degree will will make you look inside. That's right. Only that. Did you did you have that? Of course, I had that. Yeah. That's 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 really when I was trying to understand what is conscious. What what does it mean, consciousness? Can I make a conscious computer? It was also a, a time of middle age crisis for me, right. where I you know I had achieved everything that the world 
told me, they never told me. But you know, right? you, you but, know, but yeah. you know, you, you, there. you got it, right? That's the message that if you, you know, if you have a great family, you're healthy, you, you know, you're rich and famous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you have made it, you should be happy. Check, 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 check. I yeah. check all those mm -hmm. boxes and I was miserable. Mm. So what's wrong with this picture? Of course, I found out later that it was because I neglected myself. I was living out, out there, believing that reality is only out there. Mm. That's why I got into this mess. Mm. So I bought, I bought the mantra and, I, and it took me to the edge, okay? Uh -huh. Because even what, even what they promise and I achieve, because most people don't achieve those. So they run like, you know, like, a, like in a, you know. Until in, in, death. Yeah, until yeah, death all in the way. that wheel, right? Where's the success? <laughs> yeah, that's right, right, that's right. You right. know, let me try again, right? Let me mm. try again, you know, mm. because I didn't get it. Let me try again. Right. So, so they, never, they, never, they never even get a chance to pause, to stop. I got everything that I thought that I needed. I, I had that. I was fortunate because I reached that. And that gave me a moment of pause. And I said, wait a second. How, how come I, you know? I'm not happy, really. But I, mm -hmm. it was because of that pause that I had time to ask myself, am I really happy or am I pretending to be happy? Mm. And mm. I was pretending to be happy, of course, mm. because I was, you know, how can you not after you have achieved everything that you, the world tells you, you know, the world cannot be wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> By all intents, I mean, everything, you you live in Los Altos Hills, you invented the damn Silicon Valley, more or less. You, you, you know, you're revered by people, in, especially in technology, and yet, fundamentally then, you were miserable. Yes. And so, I'm mean, just looking at my audience now. So, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention because I had a I, I had an experience that was a one fifty thousandth of that level of success. Oh, I'm the Stanford doctor. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. My parents are happy. I have a four hundred one k. I have an Acura with yeah. a leather interior. Oh well, what the heck? <laughs> and I'm rolling around the Silicon Valley with my you know with my mortgage and all this. But I'm like, oh, cool, okay, I'm doing well. Miserable, miserable, miserable. Yeah. And and felt that the meaning and purpose of yeah. what I was doing. Yeah was reduced to these patients are machines, yeah. we patch them up and we yeah. put them back out. Yeah. yeah. And 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 it like you said, you go right to the edge. Yeah. You're like looking at the precipice yeah. Yeah. of of just oblivion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course the precipice is death, right? In that yeah, case. In because that case. you know, and death is the ultimate, you know, annihilation. In that model. In that model. In that model. Right? It's the end. But, and that yeah. so the first thing that that experience, my first experience gave me it was very clear from that experience that I will not die. Mm. That that spiritual opening that you had, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know that 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 told me I am eternal. So many people have said this from either yeah. uh, spiritual experiences like that, meditative experiences, drug experiences. They all come back saying, "I'm eternal." Yeah, my my old producer that, Tom. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, clearly not my bo my physical body. Right, 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 right. Foolish, right. right. It's the avatar. But, <laughs> yeah, that's the right. avatar. You know, but you see the in in that model of the body is an avatar, right? Is that suppose you you play a game, you know, in in a, in a with an and you are controlling an avatar in a virtual reality game, and you get so you know so engrossed in that game that you know you think you are the avatar and you think the world that you are living, experiencing, is the is the real world. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe only for ten minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. then you are killed. So then, all, then imagine when, when you're killed, all the signals that came from the virtual world mm. stop mm. reaching you. So now you're awake and say, oh, oh no, I, I didn't die. I'm, I'm, I'm a body controlling an avatar. So I was not in the computer. I thought I was in the computer, but I'm not. So I'm out here. Now suppose that your body dies. Is this just like the avatar dying? The body dies and you wake up to the other reality and you realize that many of the signals that you were attributing to the body, they were coming from there, like mm. your thoughts mm. or your emotions. Mm. Not, the, not, not the physical signals of the world, but the, you know, thoughts, emotions, that stuff that you that's, don't know where it comes from. But that's the real. That's the real that's stuff. That's the real stuff. 
Oh, uh, you got it. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> but 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 you know, and it does it it does not take much to actually you know to actually corroborate this because there are tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of near death experiences, and you know about it, right? Yeah. Yep. People that are taken into a, into an emergency, heart is stop, mind no sign, no sign, no 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 vital sign in the brain. They are clinically dead, and because their temperature can be lower and they can be operated and so on, you know they can be patched back together. Then when they wake up, many of them tell that they had an experience. Okay, and I don't want to go through that, but. The point is that that experience revealed to them that they were not a physical body. Those people are changed by that experience forever, yeah. forever most of them, mm -hmm. and they most of them do not fear death anymore. They, the death is, you know, is yeah. they know yeah. they were dead. Yeah. Okay. And they, but they found themselves into, you know, in this, you know, environment of light when they met people that were, you know, their parents that were already dead, the friends that were dead. They had an incredible feelings of love and joy and belonging and peace. But then they were told, well, you have to go back because you have, you haven't finished, you have, you haven't done, you're finished with your stuff. So, you know, so they wake up themselves into, you know, the recovery room of you know, <laughs> like, the hospital. Damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> it was so close to being awake. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, and I'll, I'll take it one step further and go, you know, every single one of us has this experience every day when we dream. We create this world of symbols yeah. that's entirely mind generated. Yeah. And then we die when we wake up and we go, oh, yeah. wait a yeah. minute, I'm not, yeah. oh, I'm the yeah. dreamer. Yeah. I, I'm not the yeah. dream. That's yeah. Right. yeah, exactly. It's the same, mm. except the, the dream that compared to a, 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 you know an ecstatic experience or an experience like a near death, by the way, they- Feels they more real. Recounted. Mm. No, they, they are like, few dreams that you might have in your life. They are the very vivid dreams, the mm. ones that, you know, that are so powerful. Mm. Ideally, even the dreams in which you are, you wake up in the dream. Mm. Which, the which lucid is, you know, dreams. The lucid dream. yeah. Yes. Th those, are, those are the dreams, you know, full of intensity and, you know, that, that would compare to those kind of, uh, those kind of and, experiences. And many people who've had those experiences say that it felt more real than real. Yeah. Like this feels not yeah. real now. Yeah. yeah. I, I had some dreams that I I, I remember more vividly mm -hmm. than any waking uh, waking experience. Mm, mm, yeah. mm, mm, mm. Yes, you know, so powerful. So does your um, does your family think you're crazy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because you know I have these conversations sometimes, and, and they're like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "I'm better than okay, actually. I, I feel like I'm waking up a little bit. Yeah. It's still hard." No, I, I I am much much happier, mm. and I know now the difference mm. between what it means to be happy and what it means to not to be happy, mm. because I'm quite aware of my state, of my inner state, where, you know, when I was 40 or, you know, my uh, late, for, up to the, my late 40s, I, you know, I, I didn't look, you know, I, I didn't want to look inside. It was just, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was always all living outside. So I didn't know. And that was exactly why I was so desperate at, one, mm -hmm. you know, at, at the end of that process, because I had, totally neglected who I am, what I want, who am I, what, what, you know, what am I here for and whatever. But partly because I was told that, you know, we are here to work, I guess, or to be happy, but even that didn't work. And so what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you have a, a, a go-to spiritual practice that you use now? Uh, yeah, is actually writing. Ah. Uh, I, it, to me, is like a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really like a meditation because mm -hmm. I, I go into a state of uh, receptivity. Uh -huh. Because you know, and I get unbelievable number of ideas through that. Yeah, the, 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 that silencing yeah. of the mind and yeah. the noise. Yeah. So that that's why I love doing live shows too, yeah. because it's this opening of uh, creativity and stuff comes out. Not yes. all of it's good. Yeah, but the, the I think where the magic comes and that's why you have an editor yeah. and that, but you're editing in real time, yeah. but like it's recognizing what ideas are actually connected and good 
in with a meta awareness and then going with those. Yes. And so you open the gate to yeah. like the universe yeah. spitting stuff out yeah. and then you edit that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and that's what it feels like sometimes, especially if you're if you're writing lyrics for a music parody or you're coming up with ideas to do do something for a show. Yeah. That's how it feels like for yeah. me. Uh, yeah, artists that, that have worked on themselves also that have you know done some introspection and uh, you know meditation and so on uh, also know exactly that you mm -hmm. know what 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 it means you know what what you know uh, how to reach the essence of who you are know that you are you are you are you are where you're supposed to be mm. you know where, you know before this awakening uh, uh you know I, I i was always my mind was always going to where i was i was supposed to be instead of where i was mm. And so it was always kind of it was never present in in many ways. It mm. was you know it was it was always about the future, about what needs to be done, about what now you know. And so and yet you know my inventiveness came mostly from dreams, <sighs> waking up with the idea. You know, so <laughs> uh, you talk a little bit about yeah. that in the book, yeah. you know, turning something over in your head yeah. and sleeping yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. And and coming up with the solution. Yeah, that's right. And so and, and I sort of took it for granted. I never kind of gave it a, much of a thought. Like, oh, okay, yeah. and, you know. It, it, but 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 in fact, you know, now I understand because it, that that was the part of me that was still connected, uh -huh. you know, to my uh, higher being, my uh -huh. higher self, the, the who, who I am really, that quantum entity that I was telling you before, which you know, which is you know, of which I'm a portion of mm -hmm. uh, in, in my model. And so, so that you know, that connection is always there, even, even, you know, even, even if you don't know that you have that connection. But mm -hmm. now, with what I know, um, it, it makes sense to me. But, but Bernardo Castrop and I were talking about, and we, we all are uh, associates yeah. now by proxy. We're talking about this idea of showing up as an authentic self that yes. you are. Yeah. And I think you're talking about, you're getting at it, which is allowing that creativity to come through yeah. as who you are and absolutely not trying to force it into a different yeah into the classical model yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. this is what this yeah. says i should be right yeah. but for example now i find difficult to prepare myself i don't want to prepare myself you see i want to be spontaneous how funny i'm the same way now yeah. and i suck but at it in still the, but <laughs> it, <laughs> You're much better at yeah, it. In the past, you know, I, I would be ter terrified not to, to prepare to, to you know, not to be prepared. You know, I, I, yeah, you yeah. know, a sort of anxiety. You know, yeah. sort of. You know, now I, I actually I don't want to prepare. I, I, you know, because if I if I prepare, I don't. I come out fake. It's you fake. Know? Yeah, S uh, man. It, it. I'm so I'm forty. Going to be forty eight this month. Yeah, and and I'm discovering for the first time in my life how to embrace yeah. the fact that I want to yeah. be authentic yeah. and spontaneous, which means I used to feel so guilty yeah. that I didn't prep yeah. or that I didn't prep enough. Yeah. It was never enough. Yeah. It's like, you gotta yeah, for a talk, yeah. I better memorize all yeah, the slides. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, you want me to do a talk? When? Yeah. Let me show up. Yeah. Well, yeah. who's your who's your audience? Okay, yeah. well, this is the thing, guys. Yeah. And it, then it's this. Yeah. Now, sometimes it doesn't hit, but that's yeah. just the nature well, of it. But it's fine, but, yeah. but, but, but you it's know, how, how many times did it did it not hit even if you prepare? Every single time. <laughs> right. you, you, look, you, you look like a, you know, you, a, robot. You, you, a robot, right? And you're living up to the mantra, yeah. we are machines. That's right. Well, of course, that's what you are now, that, when you do that. Now we could probably, we could probably put a finer point on that and say preparation helps to allow authenticity. So putting in that work is still important. It doesn't mean you just throw it away. Yeah, that's right. Right, right. Yeah. No, I mean, no, I mean you, know, you would I, never I, have been able to make these microprocessors without ridiculous. No, of, of, of course, but, yeah. but, 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 you know, I'm not saying that, you know, it's a diff, this situation I'm talking about is very different. You know, writing a book is, uh, is something that requires tremendous amount of dedication mm. and, uh, uh, and, and really, uh, will to get it done to 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 express yourself properly, but even there, I'm I'm not I am open Chilling. to whatever shows up, right? And I go with it, okay. And then, but then I read it again, and then you know, and then I find that perhaps there is a better way of you know of putting this and so on, 
And so, so it is a process, mm. but the, the creative process, which is the essence, because if it doesn't come first, mm. you're not going to make him up mm-hmm. by, by, by shuff, you know, by exchanging words, right? Right, <laughs> but right, com- right. But trying different combinations. <laughs> no, no, you know, so, so, so the, the inspiration has to be there. Then you can do better with reason right. because you are on the base of inspiration. Right, and that. besides, even when you use your reason, you can still be open to new inspiration right. and, and, and do it even better. Now that, that brings up something <clears throat> that, and again, this is how, again, looking at inside at your own mind, how these connections form. A computer would not make the, what I'm about to say, I'm not saying I'm smarter than a computer uh, at mechanical stuff, but I'm saying that this induction, when you say, you know, one, so the, 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 you know, preparation, constraints, things like that. One, the everything that is, yeah. that we're a part of, uh, is striving to know itself. I've always struggled with this idea that the world is resource constrained. And that, and I talked with Don on my show yeah. about this, that, that this resource constraint, there's so much, there's only, you, you're fighting for resources, for energy, for food, for yeah. mates, all of that. That itself drives the evolutionary process because it creates a kind of scarcity and a set of constraints that then we have gives a structure to grow. Yeah. If one is trying to know itself, why wouldn't it arise uh, situations where we feel like we're separate, mm. we forget that we're part of a whole, we're resource constrained and have to compete and struggle. And then that emerges th- through the rules and the constraints, new uh, knowledge of ourself and, and growth. Is that, is, am I being crazy? Well, t- to, me, to me, in some ways, uh, if we were fat, damn, and happy. Fat, right? dumb, and happy, yeah. You know, it, 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 I'm you know, getting there. Wh- why, <laughs> why, why look for anything? Why change? Why, you, you know what I mean? So even suffering is essential uh, uh. To, to, to find out as a signal that something is amiss, right? Mm. That, that you need to look there where the suffering comes from. Mm. Uh, so, so, you know, I think we are, you know, this reality is, is like a school, you know, we are, we are here to know ourselves and know, and we know ourselves not necessarily we don't, we don't complete the learning while we are here, mm. because if you accept for a second the idea of a simulator, right? Uh, here we are going to screw up, and then we go out of the simulator. <laughs> we have some, some people that know more than us, and, and we, we go through a, you know, we, we, we talk about what did I do wrong, you know? And then, so have you thought about this? And so you go through a process of, you know, of understanding based on the experiences that you had had in this world, ah. you see. Do, do you think this understanding that's gained collectively by awareness as a whole is lost? In other words, is this a e- never ending repetitive process of growth and destruction where everything that we've learned and evolved is lost or do you think there's some memory? How do you think? Oh, no, that? no, I think, I, I, think, I think there is a continuing growth. I mean, if, if you know, I think that no, no new experience is lost. Mm. It would not make sense. I mean, it would, you know, we, again, if you accept the premise, the premise is that one wants to know itself, mm. okay? And one is the totality that ex- that what exists, and one creates, starts with, creates co- these consciousness units, which are like the monads of, of Leibniz. Which, right. They are much closer to what, you know, to, to, uh, to the conscious units than the CAs, you know, the, the conscious agents of, mm. of Don Hoffman. Mm. Uh, so these, these, you know, these entities which are part holes, they, are, they have all the capacities of one, but they are also part of one. And, you know, so, uh, but so are ourselves, by the way, they have all the capacities of the whole, which is a, right? Ah. Same, a cell is a part whole of our body. And we have, about a hundred trillion of them, right? <laughs> and each cell has the entire genome of the body, mm-hmm. okay? So it, it is a whole in the sense, it has all the basic information. To make even anything, if yeah. Even if the portion of that information that they express is a portion of that genome, mm. still they possess 
hold that information. So this seems to be a repeating theme in reality, this idea of the fractalism and- Yeah, I mean, particle. basically, basically, you know, uh, we are part of one and one is part of us. Mm. You know, which is a you know again a mind bender, right? Because mm. because how can a a part of something, you know, a part of a whole, you know, the whole is part of me, right? Mm. That's a that's a that's like, but how Paradise. can a particle be a particle and, and a, a wave? wave. <laughs> <laughs> so again, paradox <laughs> is also built into the thematic fracture, uh, the structure of reality. Yeah, I, I mean, but, but again, is is a is the the holographic the holographic nature of reality a part that is also the whole? Mm. Mm. I mean, in, you know, in, in a hologram, mm. a portion of the hologram contains the whole. Right. Right. Yeah, and even physicists have proposed a holographic nature of the universe. Which is interesting, yeah. Yeah. but in, in the case you can turn around and say the whole is containing each part of itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's the paradigm that is you know is quantum physics paradigm. Right. Right. Which again gets back to can a computer have an internal experience? And the answer is how would that ever be possible? Yeah. In this in this structure. No. In this structure, no. No. In no. this structure, no. And. It's again, to answer the question that we started with, are we living in a virtual reality? Yes and no. And no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But, but, but it is, it yeah. is, but you see, you know, because, because see the idea that, but look, in, in my second book, I go through, you know, many of the things that we believe that cannot be possibly right, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, how can something how can reality be made of black and white? Right, wrong, mm, true, mm, false, mm, mm, mm. okay? You can create realities or, or, you know, or systems for which that is true. Mm. A, mathematic, a mathematical theory, for example, lives on the strict regimen of true or false. If something is not 100% true, mm. it's false. Okay, so even 99.9999% right, true, if it's not 100%, it's false. Okay, so that's the that's that world. Black and white. Black and white. Okay. And you, your computer and, bits are the same way, right? Voltages uh, from exactly 0.6 to one are way. on. Yeah, it, exactly. It, you know, the, the bit, there is no half bit, there right. is no quarter bit. Right. It's, it's rounded up to the nearest bit. <laughs> zero or one, yeah. there is no 0.9, okay? But even in quantum physics, quantum physics is mostly probabilistic. So you, you have only probabilities which are not zero. They are more than zero and less than one. Right. But if it was that way, you could not falsify quantum physics. To falsify quantum physics, you had to have, you must predict situation in which the probability is one or zero mm -hmm. that that will happen. Mm -hmm. And quantum physics does. So quantum physics can be falsified. Mm -hmm because it can predict situations in which the probability is one or is zero. And so you can falsify because one experiment that goes against that prediction and is enough true. to falsify the theory. And it's never been falsified though. No, so it? far, no, no, mm -hmm. never been falsified. Yeah. But most, most experiments, you know, uh, when you have a probability, you, you know, you, that, that doesn't prove or disprove anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can say, it's well, a I mean, it, it's a probability. It could have happened the other way. You right, know? right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Well, so, <laughs> I, I, this has been really a fantastic conversation. I mean, I could talk to you for like four hours. And in fact, would you be willing to come back and, because we, we look, we only touched on the surface. Yeah, I mean, this is a new, and, a new it's a new Weltanschauung. A what? A what? A new Weltanschauung. What is that? A new, a new way of looking at reality. Oh, I mean, if how you, do you if, spell that? It's a German word. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 It is. And yeah. and and the thing is, so what's interesting is, and, and, and the audience didn't see this, but when we started having our conversation, uh, I hit record and we just started talking, and and we went deep down the rabbit hole of. Yeah quantum mechanics and details of free will, probabilities and things like that. It was so deep 
that we stopped and said, okay, <laughs> now let's have a normal conversation. <laughs> and this is what happened. <laughs> and so what I wanna do at some point is I'll, I'll take some aspects of that earlier conversation yeah. and release them as clips, because I think if people wanna go deeper on this stuff, and then let's have you come back, especially when that second book happens. Yeah. And um, talk about it more, because I think a lot of people in the comments will have questions. Yes. Uh, because this is not intuitive. No. <laughs> That's the no. problem. No, it's not intuitive. I mean, it's much more intuitive than we are a machine, right? It, easily In some intuitive. ways, because, you know, but but then we, we you know, if we accept that, on, you know, first of all, you know, many, many scientists that you never believe your intuition. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, because it fails us at very small and very yeah. large. So, yeah. so being non-intuitive sometimes may be, may be, a, <laughs> maybe a plus. Maybe better. <laughs> maybe a plus, exactly. Oh, Federico <laughs> Fagin, it is such a pleasure. You're a living legend. It's an honor. I feel so grateful to have you here in my little humble place. Uh, it, it it reminds me that I made the right decision ultimately coming back to the Bay Area and the Silicon Valley to be closer to people like you that are thinking differently and have had such an impact on humans and and being vulnerable enough to share your own story and saying, hey, I had everything and it didn't feel right. Yeah. And this is what I have to offer now. It's, it's beautiful. Um, Thank you, and uh, CPAC, I mean, well, I don't even know how to end that. I'm just gonna say, share it, hit your questions in the comments, um, check out the book, Silicon, it's available on Amazon and everywhere, yes. yeah? mm -hmm. and I'll put a link in, and, um, and gosh, think about this stuff, because I think the paradigm that we are machines has run its course, Yes, and it's time we transcended it to the next thing, because that's the future of our species. All right, guys. Nothing less important than that. Uh, we are out. Peace. Thank you, Federica. <laughs> <laughs>